okay guys we have discussed about these three types live attenuated killed and the conjugated type of vaccines now in this case we'll be talking about not subunit vaccines we are not import, uh, looking for the subunit type we are very import, uh, interested about this DNA vaccines and RDT type vaccines so the vaccines where we utilize DNA strands and also utilizing the recombinant DNA technology which is vigorously used for the viral mediated vaccines we are going to see we can use viruses as the delivery agent uh, of this DNA into the host cell to produce the immune response so virus can also virus mixture can also act as vaccines here okay now the causative agent of the virus can also use uh, as it so as we can see in case of the live attenuated form the similar way we can also take this viral rdt type of uh, vaccine can be of this live attenuated type because the virus we will be taking the viral will be living but that virus will not cause any kind of diseases it won't cause any disease because we will modify its gene right we are going to see it later now in this video we will be talking about the dna type of vaccines DNA type means what we are doing here we will take DNA and we utilize the different DNA technology molecular biological techniques to modify the DNA and then incorporate it now the basic understanding for that is that we take the uh, DNA from West Nile virus so we are having the West sorry we are having West Nile virus it is also called WNV or West Nile virus. Now, from this West Nile virus, this West Nile virus is having a single stranded, uh, so it is having RNA. So, let's say this is RNA, which is a single stranded, as we all know. Now, what we'll do, we, we take this RNA, and what we do, we make this RNA first. Uh, another strand is made. So, this is from the RNA, this is from the DNA strand. So, this strand is made up with DNTPs. Or deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates instead of RNTPs. Now, so it's a hybrid structure which is formed after extracting the RNA from the West Nile virus. It is done in vitro. We take it and we try to make this copy. So, what we will call, we call this a complementary DNA, right? Because this DNA is a complementary part, so it's not the real one, it is complementary DNA. So, what we produce this double stranded complementary DNA or cDNA from here. Okay, now what we can do, we can replace this blue thing with uh, another strand of DNA. So this can be a DNA. Okay, now this DNA will be taken for our use. Now that's how we can prepare the DNA. Uh, okay, now the DNA for the West Nile virus was chosen because it is having two important segments. Now if we need to uh, use this virus, if we need to go against this West Nile virus, which is a dangerous virus, which can cause disease in ours. Now if you need to know what West Nile virus cause, uh, what type of disease West Nile virus cause, you can go for a video in my YouTube channel, you can find it, you can look at it. But now in this video I am not going to talk about that. But the disease can be remedy, uh, sorry for that. Anyways, the disease can be uh, uh, reversed utilizing this kind of technique of vaccination. So we take the West Nile virus and the important genes which are causing diseases are of two different types. So one of the gene, are, gene is called PRM. Another gene is there which is called the E gene. Now these two genes are the uh, gene of our interest. Now for example say this is the PRM gene. So say this is the PRM and say here this is the E gene. So that's why we need to take up the segment in such a way that we are having both of them. PRM as well as the E gene together. Now what we require for this uh, vaccination, we must use DNA for the vaccine delivery agent. We cannot use RNA. Why? Because it's using the normal molecular biology basics. We know that RNA are very, very unstable and it is extremely hard to work with RNA. So we need to look for the DNA. And for producing DNA from RNA, we need to rely on the complementary DNA technology. So we need to convert this RNA into a cDNA or complementary DNA. Then we take this DNA. Now as we know, this DNA must contain both the sites, PRM site as well as it also contains this E site. So it contains both the sites together. Now what we'll do, we can cut this DNA into different sites in such a way using restriction enzymes that it will give us only the segment which is having PRM and E. But it is not always possible because there should, there must be the specific sequences for the restriction enzymes to cleave it. 
but that was not exactly available all the time. So the second technique we rely on in this process is we are generating primers against the flanking sequences. For example, say if this is the PRM protein, now this is the flanking sequence and this is the another flanking sequence uh, right beside the E uh, gene. So we design primer against these two flanking regions. So we design primer against this as well as this. So we design the primers right this direction and using these primers uh, we can amplify this segment of the part of the D West Nile virus DNA which carries both E as well as the PRM gene. So first what we do, we design a primer. So after that, primer designing which is pretty easily obtained by software uh, nowadays using bioinformatics tools. Now after designing the primer, what we do, we run PCR or polymerase chain reaction. We all know what PCR is. If you don't know, go back and there are videos in my website also. Now you do the PCR. After doing the PCR, what we get? We get a repeated copy of this segment. So what we get here is a lot of copy of this thing. So we get lots and lots of this thing, lots of this DNA and all of this DNA will have two regions. Okay. One is this PRM site. Another one is this E gene. So both of the gene is okay. So what you've seen till now that we have made the cDNA, then we amplify the cDNA using PCR or polymerase chain reaction. And in all of these products, what we get is uh, this PRM gene as well as E gene together. Both of the genes we required, so we have uh, got the, both of genes. Okay. Now after this stage, what we we'll do? We need to purify the product. So we'll take it. And you go through uh, this product with the purification step using column chromatography. Remember, column chromatography. If you don't know what is column chromatography, please look at the video in my website and my YouTube channel. You will find a video of column chromatography. That's why it's very important to follow it from the beginning because these are the basic molecular biology techniques that we regularly follow. Now using column chromatography we purify it. Now for those who don't know column chromatography I just make a very quick understanding of this column chromatography and how it's done. So it, it is simply a column. So through inside this column there is there is this column is having a bed. Now the bed means it's a solid matrix. Now the solid matrix is prepared with any kind of molecule, uh, type of polymerizing molecule. So it's a polymer of that kind of molecule. Now you take this product and we just add the product onto this from the top. Now what will happen? Selected uh, DNA sequences will bind with uh, this matrix and other sequences will be eluted. So we'll, then we elude the binder sequences, the bound sequences in a tube. Now inside the tube we'll have our desired product. Now we can use this product as a vaccine. So the after the purification, the purified content of the DNA will be acting as a vaccine. Okay, so vaccine solution, we can inject it uh, inside the cell so that it can go and bind it and can change it. Okay, so that's how we can uh, produce vaccine against the West Nile virus. But we need to remember about this PRM and E genes which are the most important part about this uh, DNA vaccine. So it's an example of DNA vaccine. There are different types of DNA vaccines incorporating different technologies, but this is one of them. Okay, now in future video, so I have covered it, we will be talking about the utilization of recombinant DNA technology to produce another viral vaccine. This is also a viral vaccine, but in the future case, we will be looking at the vaccine which a virus itself can act as a vaccine. Right? Now the example we are going to look at is vaccinia virus. Okay, thank you.